okay guys uh, let us see an overview of what are all the topics we discussed till now uh, let me share my screen with you so we have completed ec2 evs vpc vpn connections and route 53 uh, we have talked we have completed even s3 uh, yesterday we have talked about the glacier okay uh on glacier uh, yesterday we got problem right uh, the problem is with this policies uh, usually uh what he did glacier have for retrieving uh, not only for retrieving the data downloading the data from the glacier to uh, our end he has three policies on pricing so after entering to the glacier server glacier service you have to highlight which vault and you have to go for the vault settings here for data retrieval policy he divided it into three types a free tier maximum retrieval rate or no, no unlimited retrieval rate he call it a no retrieval limit so uh, right away my account was not under free tier by default it goes it keeps free tier only so it's been more than one year i was using this account so i was not eligible for the free tier that's the reason i was unable to download yesterday's the files so after changing it to maximum retrieval rate or specifying some retrieval rate per hour here you can specify 1 gb per hour so that for each hour you can retrieve you can download only 1 gb of download if you if the size even the size is bigger than 1 gb the file size even bigger than 1 gb you cannot download that size then it's better to you, you always keep these settings for unlimited retrieval but, but the price is varies so you can see view the price from this price page here also you can see for free tier persons he is he is giving you retrieval cost for free it's not for a uh, unlimited uh, retrieval data even though for this free tier the, for retrieving the data he has given he has kept some limit on the retrieval size See up to five percent of average. How much? How much data you uploaded? And that, what is saying? You can retrieve up to five percent of your average monthly storage for free each month. That is what for free tier he is offering. So what I did, I just changed the settings to this, and let us open this uh, fast glacier. and it started downloading fast glitch here see on the back ends the task was running yesterday it went fail right so now i run the same task for two times that's the reason it is downloading so even if if i run a new task again to download it download confirm download Way to download. Specify the path. So successfully, your request has been requested. Please wait four to five minutes. Five. So now backend it is running four tasks. Before it was three. Now it's running four tasks. Here you can see. So among them, two are in quick. because already at the same see the thing is that you can download a same file or the same object or the same archive you can raise uh, at least at a time only two requests with amazon glacier after completing this first two downloads then only it starts the third and fourth or whatever next how many requests you raise on the same archive So remember this point in mind. 
so it's uh, here in the interview questions they may ask so in aws glacier you have uploaded some archive to this glacier to the vault so if you want to download it so download the same file so they'll ask what is the maximum operations uh, rate for the downloading this uh, uh, archive at the same time so just you have to say maximum is n number but on the same time he kept a limit of just two archives so after completing this two archives download it pulls up it goes for the next whatever the archive is in the waiting list or in the quick state like that you have to answer and also he'll ask what are the three uh, different uh, retrieval policies with the glacier just say him free tire max retrieval rate or unlimited retrieval or no retrieval limit these are all the three different policies for retrieving the data from the glacier to your systems or your to local systems as it was okay so today we'll talk about ses simple email service what is email service so see what happens in in offices uh, they provide you email id after joining in every office every domain will have its own personal domains or mail server and they'll provide you email ids with their domains let us say if you are with capgemini they'll provide you ravi@capgemini.com with their domain names they'll provide you a mail ids so so every domain we can build how many mail servers you want and you can choose whether what kind of mail server you wanted to build whether it is internal or external there are two types of mail servers one is internal and external external is nothing but it deals with all the mail servers other mail servers in the world internal is uh, internal is nothing but it deals with only for this company purpose company other employees mail address from internal mail server you cannot send mails to other persons out of the domain mails like let us say you had a mail server capgemini.com or xyz.com and you you had a user you have created a user under that xyz.com on the mail server let us assume the user is uh, raju@xyz.com so if you prefer that mail server to be internal like how you prefer what you prefer is uh, it's depend upon while you creating the mail server you'll do this so if you prefer that mail server to be an internal it does not communicate with other external mail servers so you cannot send from mails from raju@xyz.com to other email servers like maybe ravi@gmail.com you cannot send that mails to from raju to ravi from this domain this internal mail domain to external gmail domain or hotmail domain or whatever the domain it is so you have to choose what kind of mail server you are you are going to build or you need so this simple email services it's completely an external mail server something related to external mail server and this service is only for sending the mails it doesn't bother about retrieving the mails or getting the mails how this works let me explain you in a diagrammatical form so let us assume in your company they have built a mail server with this xyz.com domain so after after creating the mail server after uh, creating the mail server i mean to say you have to choose one instance with amazon web services and you have to install the mail server application for examples of mail servers in the market is open free source mail servers is jimra 
Zimra is a best example of open source free mail server. So let us assume you have built a mail server and you made it public and you have created some users on this mail server. Ravi at the rate xyz.com or Raju at the rate xyz.com or Ramu at the rate xyz.com so you configured these accounts you configure these accounts into this employees three employees laptops or desktops let us assume these three employees will have three laptops Ravi, Raju, and Ram. Let us assume you configure this mail server settings to their Outlook application. Laptops Outlook application. If you want to send mails from Ravi to Raju, it is possible because both Ravi and Raju are the users of this mail server right so you created these both users under this xyz.com same domain mail mail server so without any problems it sells the mails from Ravi to Raju Ravi to Ramu from whoever it from the three so when it is trying to send a mails from one mail server to another mail server let us assume you wanted to send a mail from Ravi at the rate xyz.com to some others let us assume Ravi is a guy He's a marketing employee in his company. He wants to send a mails to thousands of employees, some other uh, mail IDs across the world to make his business. So in this scenario, so let us assume he's, he, he's sending mails to Gmail server, Gmail mail server. Under the Gmail mail server, uh, you know, everybody has an account, even I, you had an account. So let us assume x at the rate gmail.com is a user y at the rate gmail.com is a user of gmail mail server so how the mail goes from Ravi's laptop to first it goes to this mail his mail server from the mail server what it checks so where is first where it checks where is to whom he Ravi is to send my mail to x at the rate gmail let us assume he wants to send a mail to x at the rate gmail.com so first the request goes to his mail server and this mail server checks whether is gmail.com domain exist or not in public how it checks it goes for the dns entry dns entry nothing but route 53 in route 53 it checks the mx record so it asks the route 53 server it asks the dns server. as i said you already there are in the world some of the domain servers are maintained by some organizations they may they maintain all the list of domain names where is gmail.com not only about the website even they maintain a records called mx record and we call that records as mail server records so after creating your mail server in your domain dns server whether it is public face dns or private base private face dns you have to create a record mx record saying that for this mail server you have to create some name let us assume mail dot xyz dot com like that you created a mx record and assume we had a website also for this xyz dot com www dot xyz dot com this is a record c name record let us assume test dot xyz dot com is a c name record for this website like that you create a MX record for this website so it checks with DNS server whether gmail.com the, the domain really exists if exists where this I want to go with that domain mail server where that mail server exists so it checks the MX records of the domain gmail.com then it finds out oh here is the mail server so let me send you this request first it communicates with other mail server so do you allow then it says I am alive then it says I want to send you mails so send me the mails 
so does i want to send a mail to your x at the rate gmail.com user does this x at the rate gmail.com user really exist in your mail server have you and how do you have a user called x at the rate gmail.com in your mail server this domain says that this mail server says that yes i have a user x at the rate gmail.com and you can send the mails to this x at the rate gmail.com like this then it forwards the mail to this server from this mail server it goes to his x at the rate gmail.com employees pc laptop desktop whatever, whatever it is like this the mails get communicate with each other the first step is you compose your mails at your laptop after clicking the send button it goes to your mail server then your mail server communicates with domain name server and it checks for this mx record finding out that mx record from that mx record it knows where exactly this mail server is located then the request goes to that particular mail server where you want to send the mails to which user whether the user exists in that mail server or not it cross checks and then it sends the mail to that external mail server the destination mail server we can call from there it goes to this user in that external or the destination mail servers laptop or pc or mobile whatever it is so what is happening okay let us assume you had a office and you created your own mail server and you wanted to market some mails you wanted to do marketing and you wanted to as a part of the marketing you wanted to sell mails to some thousands of people then there is some protocols and procedures to compose a mail in order to send it there is an organization so they they design some protocols and procedures for sending a mails saying that the mail should be in this format it does not has to contain any uh, vulnerable attachments it does not have to contain any unformatted mails like that we have some templates for sending a mails when it comes to marketing if you don't follow that template then what happens this destination mail server will scan each and every mail and they see whether whatever the mails that are getting to him how does have this template or not if does if it doesn't have the template then what it assumes it as a spam and it will send that mails to this your spam folder so let me say a simple word so every mail server in the world maintains a trust relationship with other mail servers what is this trust relationship so whether whatever the mails i was getting from this xyz.com mail server to gmail.com mail server does that does this mails consists of a formatted procedure and protocols while composing a mail does that mail consists of unwanted attachments it will scan every mail server will have its own internal scanning mechanism it will scan all the incoming mails it checks whether any viruses or trojans are in the mail or any un unwanted attachments are in the mail or unwanted unformatted comp composing of the mail structure is if if found it sends to the spam like that and it maintains a trust relationship with other mail servers if this mail server xyz.com mail server logs the trust relationship with gmail.com mail server by sending unknown attachments unformatted mail compositions then it will keep this xyz.com it will keep it will, it means here the gmail server the gmail server will keep this xyz.com server the domain in block list so what happens whenever you send your mails from this xyz.com from the users ravu@xyz.com even raju or ramu@xyz.com gmail knows previously i got some uh, un vulnerable mails from this xyz.com domain so whatever the 
new mails I'll get, I'll just block this mails. Or I'll just send the mails to my spam folder. Like this, you are losing a trust relationship with this xyz.com mail server and gmail.com mail server. So this is what happens when it comes to marketing. Or when you're dealing with public mail servers. So maybe you found your Charles Allo Gmail and Gmail mails from this center. My friend Gmail accounts can handy. So I put direct inbox like that. Why? Because your friend is a user of same Gmail dot com domain, and you are a user of same Gmail dot com domain. So it knows. Oh, this user is my domain. So I'll send the data to his inbox, the mails to his inbox. Yeah, guys, can you hear me? Hello? Arun, can you hear me? Yeah, Arun, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. There was a problem with network connectivity. Sorry for that. So, what are we talking about? Uh, everybody, can you see my uh, screen? Is my uh, screen is visible to you? Yeah, got it. Okay. So, we are talking about this concept trust relationship between the different mail servers. So. So here comes a concept called with Amazon Web Services that is SES Simple Email Service. So what exactly is Simple Email Services? So it is like a mediator between different domain mail servers. It is like a uh, shield for your mail server. Let me tell you in a diagrammatical form. So let us assume that this is your mail server xyz.com and you had a users x y z x at the rate xyz.com y at the rate xyz.com z at the rate xyz.com so here comes a concept of ses simple email service with amazon web services so what it does this is the destination you wanted to send mails gmail.com mail server so this SES comes as a mediator between your mail server and the destination mail server. So whatever the mails you sent, that mails will go through this Amazon SES. From here it will send to clients. Why? Why we require this SES? Because Amazon Web Services, this mail server will maintain a very good relationship with other mail servers in the world. It's like if you send a mail server, if you send a mails from this SES, 
from not this SES or if you send a mails from your mail server through Amazon SES or via 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 Amazon SES or through because it does not act as a sender it just acts as a mediator actually you are sending the mails from this xyz.com domain only but they are passing the mails through this SES so what it does SES checks whether your mails or whether your the users of your xyz.com compose the mails in a structural format as per the industrial standards or not it checks whether the users of your xyz.com have composed any unknown un have attached any unwanted or unknown kind of attachments or virus kind of attachments to your mails or not it will send and it will notify you while sending only it scans and what it does if it found some such kind of uh, vulnerable mails or unformatted type of mail composite composite mails then it blocks here itself only and it notifies to your user saying that you have composed just now you have sent some kind of un unformatted mail I have blocked it please recompose this mail in a formatted way as per the industrial standards then only I'll send it so that what happens your trust your mail server is sending the mails via SES such a way that it is scanning it is performing the advanced checkups of your mails whether they are composed as per the industrial standard or not and then it forwards that mails to this destination mail servers whether it is gmail.com or hotmail.com whatever the destination mail server is from there the mails goes to the end users so such a way like that this SES is maintaining a very good trust relationship with other mail servers around the world so another the best part of SES is you can capture how many mails you have sent for today from this mail server and what is the bounce back mechanism bounce back and TNT and after sending the mails through this SES they goes to the destination mail server right from mail server it will it will know this mail server will bounce back message saying that whether really your mails went to this destination users inbox or they went to their destination users spam folder or sometime what happens the mails get bound back bounce back bounce back until three round on Monday but ball Katika you, you throw the ball at wall what it happens with the same force it, it it bounces back right similarly if you send vulnerable mails to this destination mail servers or destination domain mail servers it will keep your mail server in your blacklist and whatever the mails you send it will consider the mails as a blacklist mail server and it will bounce back that mail servers to us only it doesn't accept that mails so it will showcase you how many mails through this SES you can capture today how many mails I sent and among that mails how many went to the users inbox and how many went to their spam folder and how many mails bounced back to me like that you can see the complete report from this SES mail server by using this Amazon SES mail server so let us see in real guys do you have any uh, doubts on this uh, theory concept no captain no captain the basic no. the basic usage of this SES service from Amazon web services is to send the mails it acts as a mediator between your mail server and the destination mail server because it maintains a very good trust relationship with other mail servers we are introducing this mail server Amazon SES concept in between our mail server and the destination mail server 
see i was no, i was not talking about one mails or two mails or three mails and some companies what they send they send let us assume your company is some e-commerce website and you had some 2 to 3 lakhs of customers let us assume a scenario about this snapdeal.com flipkart.com whatever so how they send the mails if they if they had some thousands and lakhs of customers right they wanted to send the mails so they doesn't compose thousand mails and send to thousand customers right they'll compose one mail and they'll keep this lakh customers into one group and by just clicking the send button this mail will get sent to the lakh customers inboxes so how they monitor for this that scenario only we we have this acs concept so among this lakh customers how much mails went to their inboxes how much mails it bounced back how much mails that went to his spam folder you can get that report through this acs and also it checks have we composed that mails as per the industrial standard or this mails has any vulnerable attachments so direct, let us directly jump into this acs service so you can find this acs service on amazon web console under the category of application services because he is offering you this service as a saas software as a service he is saying that boss you doesn't don't bother about the infrastructure of this acs where it is hosted you don't bother about the platform of this service on what platform this service is running i'll take care of it just you use this acs application i am i am a aws guy is offering this acs service to clients clients nothing but me or who enrolls with amazon web services he is offering this acs service to us as software as a service saas that's the reason he kept it under the application services how do how do we offer the application services to clients through saas so under this you can find ses email sending and receiving services just click on it uh here you have to choose in which region you are going to launch this ses because always see that keep your mail server near to your region from where your most of the workers do this work because the latency is less considering this latency period you have to always launch any service with amazon web services the region is near to us so under this let me go with singapore region with singapore is not offering the service right now he is offering the service with virginia oregon and ireland okay among the other data centers he is not having this acs service recently i hope recently implemented this service with ireland and oregon i i used it to see only with virginia a uh, 6 months ago okay he slowly he slowly adding his services to other data centers other regional data centers so under this acs if you add your domain you can see that domain from here under the domain section if you add your mail servers then you can find that thing from the domains right away i don't have any domains added to this acs service and and also it's like what, what is this domain and what is this email address why they are under the left side category on the same identity management let me tell you here if you add this domain 
so after adding the domain xvj.com to this here white list so whatever the mails that you sent from this xvj.com so from whatever the user let us assume you had a thousand users with xvj.com mail server so whoever the mail sends from there this domain xvj.com the mails will pass via or through this SES to the customers and that scenarios you wanted to add this domain so you are adding your domain to SES server complete domain xvj.com so whoever the users may send the mails their mails will go through this SES to clients in this scenario you add the complete domain to your SES no if you want to add only some email IDs to SES let us assume you had xvj.com domain and you wanted to monitor only this X and Y users of xvj.com mail servers let us assume X, y, X and Y are the marketing people and JD is some management so you won't, don't want to monitor the management employees mail IDs you are most con bothered about this marketing people mail IDs so just add their mail IDs to your SES service So whether you wanted to go with the complete domain or whether you wanted to go with email address. For this scenarios, for this scenario, we'll go with our email address. Kaushikarthi.beardrittin43solutions.com. Let me remove this both first. Okay. So first we have to verify. For adding, we have to verify whether the email is really our email or not. So let me say I'll add I'll add a new email. So just type them. Let us assume uh, okay. So this is what my mail ID. So I'll just I wanted to add this mail ID to this SES. You have successfully sent a verification. So they sent a verification mail to my mail ID saying that whether the Karthik that be is my mail or not. Before adding for cross checking. So what I'll do, I'll enter into that mail ID. To enter into that mail ID, I have to connect to my office. So I'll connect through VPN. Through client to site VPN, I was trying. I am a client sitting at my home, and I was I wanted to connect to the LAN of my office. So I'll I'll go with global VPN. So it's acquiring IP address. So I got a IP address, private IP address from my LAN. No office LAN loan I got a private IP address in the 172.16.20.10. So that by using this private IP address, I can communicate with other computers of my office. So I'll come, I'll try to log in to my system, which is in my office.
so I was not trying to connect. Let me ping to my system. Okay, my system got powered off. You are off just running a system. Usually, I don't off my system, but some people did it. So it is not. I was not getting any ping response from you. And I can see that the connection, the VPN connection is good. Let me ping to my gateway. Is it possible? Even I was not pinging to my gateway, so let me restart this VPN connection again. I again connected it. No, I was pinging to my gateway. I hope no, my, I'll connect to my system. Yeah, I was connected to my system. Okay, I got a message from Amazon Web Services. Dear Amazon Simple Email Service customer, we have received a request to authorize the email address from use with Amazon SES in Ireland region. If your request is real, please click on this below link. Okay, I'll click on this below link. So right away, my verification is pending. Of I just now clicked on this, right? Congratulations, you have successfully verified an email address. Okay, thanks. Let me minimize. Now refresh this. Let me see whether I have verified it or not. Yeah, now my mail ID is verified. After verifying this mail ID, I have to compose, I have to change the outgoing mail server. So, for sending, we are using this SES, right? The outgoing mail server address in my Outlook in my systems Outlook. So this is the Outlook application of my system. From this application, I was sending the mails to customers under this Karthik.b external account. So go for the settings, account settings. So I had in my office, I had two mail servers. In order to communicate with internal employees, I'll use this internal mail server. In order to communicate with external mail employees, external persons, I'll go with external mail server. So I'll change external mail servers, re, uh, repair. See, right away for sending mails, I was using my office mail server, mail.infotrisolutions.com. Here I have to change the address to, he'll, he'll provide you the mail server address. From here you can get under the SMTP settings, this is what. Change the mail server address to this and port number to this. Whether you are going with SSL, SSL or TLS, you, here he is preferring to go with TLS. And change the sending SMTP credentials. So for sending SMTP, so sending a mail to this SES mail server, first you have to specify to your application, Outlook application or more. if you are sending through the mobile, you specify to your mobile Gmail application, go to your Gmail settings from your mobile or if you are going dealing with laptop Outlook service, go to your Outlook settings and the Outlook settings change the sending mail server, I mean SMTP mail server, 
what is smtp we use this simple mail transfer protocol smtp stands for simple mail transfer protocol we use this protocol only for sending mails on the first basic class i told you when we are talking about the networking protocols and it uses a by default it uses a port number 25 so here he is suggesting us to change the external mail server address to email.smtp.eu-west1 amazon aws.com and keep that port number it's up to you whether you keep 25 or 465 or 587 and, and change that transport layer security to TLS and for username and password he is saying to pro he's he's telling to go with SMTP credentials for SMTP credentials see below he is telling to create a new SMTP credentials for this mail now server create my SMTP credentials from I am user I can name it as SES Karthik dot B at the rate Gmail sorry info tree solutions dot com okay and show more settings so here we are saying that we are allowing whatever the mails that come from Karthik dot info tree solutions should send through SES service that is a uh, it is like a we are writing a policy in IAM identity and access management the name must contain only alphabetical characters okay I'll remove this at the rate handle keeps on this one create So it is it is bordered about the dot. Okay. And also it bothered about the spaces I hope so. And here it is dot right. So it is creating a user credentials. Okay. It has provided you an access key and secret key for authenticating into this SES service. So you have to provide this SMTP username as an SMTP password at your mail servers. Uh, in my case, I was using Outlook, right? So what I did, I went to the settings of this Outlook application under the file, under the account settings, account settings. Here, choose which mail server account settings you wanted to change. I wanted to change external mail server settings, repair go with manual setup next so here here this is what incoming mail server and external mail outgoing mail server are different so he's telling me to change the outgoing mail server to what what he's telling let me download these credentials first i downloaded these credentials and go back to the settings SMTP settings he's telling to change the server name to this okay I'll copy this control C and I'll add this to my outgoing mail server SMTP control V okay and next I'll go for more settings outgoing server yes here outgoing server what I did I told this outgoing mail server SMTP authentication to go with incoming mail server authentication what are the incoming mail server authentication this is what the incoming mail server authentication no I was I have to use another username and password right which I got from AWS guy for sending emails I'll provide that username and password here what is that username and password I downloaded the file This is what the username. Control C. 
control V username and password control C control V okay and go for advanced for outgoing server 465 now 25 and he told me to go with TLS and I'll go with port number 25 and TLS okay that's it okay no tests account settings we are testing for we are testing with incoming mail server okay incoming mail server is good we're testing with outgoing mail server It is still in progress. So there is a problem what is the problem fail did I miss anything port number 25 yes recent typical credentials I'll change the port number to 465 let me see 465 and TLS close Four sixty five and TLS. Okay. So what I'll do, this is what the mail server is given, right? Let me ping this mail server, whether this mail server is responding from my internal system or not. So I'll log into my internal system. Let me open this command prompt and ping, ping, paste, okay. Whether it is responding or not. Okay, the mail server is not responding. Uh, do I need to add any security groups for that? Create filter. Coming office through which IP address I was sending it. What is my system's IP address? WAN IP. WAN IP. Sorry. My IP. A 
allow create filter okay create filter now let me cross check So this I was not my system is not communicating with this mail server email hyphen smtp dot eu s two one dot amazon dot com until unless it doesn't respond I cannot send even though I specified the value mail server address it is not listening so what might be the problem. So problem is not from here it's from the client side okay, let me sort it out later so after so after configuring this to your uh, client application so from here under this email sending service here you can see how many mails you sent and what are the deliveries that went to their inboxes and what are the bounds mails that came back to you among the mails you sent and is, the, is anyone if you users like some case you find uh, if you got mails in your inbox after you there you can find options it's like you wanted to keep this in spam or you wanted to complain to this uh, about this mail server to your mail uh, about this mail to your mail server so if you make any some complaints you can see that complaints percentage also here and reject how many mails got rejected like if you send a mail server saying that xyz.com at the rate some domain name the domain name doesn't exist but you send that on that case what it happens it just the mails will get rejected because it doesn't find that uh, mail server with that particular domain to whom you composite that mail on that case scenarios you'll get that rejected mails under here from here from this dashboard you can see all how many went how many you sent right away for this uh, practice scenario he is limited you only for 200 mails per day so quota 200 emails per 24 hours if you wanted to increase you have to raise a request to this support raise a sending limit request so you wanted to raise a request to this amazon guy saying that i was you i wanted to use this your service ACS. you have to uh, give him a clear justification on it why you are using and what is the new quota limit you are expecting for sending emails from 200 to might be 2 lakhs you have to tell him I, I wanted to send mails to 2 lakhs customers for my business pro pro prospect you so please increase my quota from 200 to 2 lakhs or 2000 whatever it is after that what he'll do he'll change that limit value to 200 to 2000 from that you change all the employees outlook Outlook application or whatever they are using that application mail applications Outlook mail server to this SMTP settings and the credentials what I have given below So what whenever they send a mails you can observe because the mails are passing through this are uh, Passing via this SES service you can observe how many mails they sent and what are the deliveries among that happen? What are the bounce back percentage that happened among the sent mails? 
and what do does they does uh, clients uh, the send mails or the destination users have raised any complaints on your mails and any mails got rejected among your destination uh, mails like that you can see the complete information from through this Amazon SCS console from here This is about the sending emails with Amazon SCS. So even you can use this Amazon SCS service for receiving the emails also. So whatever the emails that you wanted that you are getting from clients to your inbox to your mail server xyz.com domain first they should pass through this SCS service SCS mail server for that here you can write the rules like you can allow only if you wanted to allow mails from particular only some uh, some mail servers let us assume you wanted to use you had a private mail server with you and you had another private mail server with other organization and you wanted to allow only their mail servers just whitelist their mail server IP address and block all the remaining IP addresses on this rule so what it does it blocks all the remaining IP addresses mail servers whoever sends the mails it will it will doesn't allow that mails to enter into your mail server if I write a rule called block to whom all world 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 slash 0 slash block create rule Slash zero, no? slash thirty two, slash zero. So it created a rule. It is it is blocking all the world, and it is allowing only this IP address. If the mail server is hosted on this IP address, only that mail server mails will allow it to your 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 domain, your xyz.com mail server. Like that, you can write write incoming rules, incoming mail server rules here. And First, you have to add your mail server under this rule set. So this is different concept. Uh, I'll tell you later about this rule set. This is even a new concept. Uh, I haven't gone through this. So let me cross check this uh, rule set concept. I'll tell you in the tomorrow class about it. So till now any doubts you guys you had with this uh, SCS uh, functionality level and verifying the domains or verifying the email IDs with SCS mail server SCS service of this Amazon web services and configuring this SMTP details to your outlook and seeing the statistics of how what is the percentage of our mails you sent and how many deliveries you got bounce back and complaints. Any doubts on this? Yes, who's this? I think so. Yes, please go ahead. Harun, do you have any doubts on this? No. Bavin, from your side, Kishore and Bavin. Uh, no, Bharti. Yeah. Ravi, what about you? Any doubts, Hello? Ravi? Yes, Ravi. No, 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 no. no doubts. And Srikanth and Srinivas, any doubts? Open there. No, no, Kathy. Okay. This is what about a CS. On tomorrow class, we'll talk about this SNS, Simple Notification Service. 
Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay, we'll just end this session, okay? We'll meet you tomorrow. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.